of the big changes in the upcoming Rails 3.1 release is SAS. This is now provided by default as a way of generating CSS. It provides variables and nesting and a whole lot more that you don't get with your standard CSS. So let's dive in in this episode and figure out exactly how we can add this to our application. So here's what the site looks like that we'll be working with. Currently is done in just plain old CSS. So let's convert this to SAS and figure out exactly what advantages it gives us. So we'll be keeping the look of the site the same. We'll just be changing the internals over to SAS. So here's what the style sheet I have currently looks like. It's pretty standard here, not a whole lot of code. So it'll be simple to convert. So let's convert this over to SAS. The first step, if you're in Rails 3.1, is to add an extension to the file name here. Just add .scss file extension to the, the name here. Now normal CSS code is fully compliant with SAS if you're using this SCSS extension. So you can see if we reload this page here, you can see that, well, it looks exactly the same even though we're using SAS now. Well, that's it for this episode on converting CSS over to SAS. I hope you enjoyed it. No, but seriously though, uh, it's really nice that CSS is fully supported because now you can pick and choose exactly which features you want to use in SAS, or you can just uh, not use any of them at first and just work exactly like you do in normal CSS. But I think if you take a look at these features I'll show you, uh, you might want to use a few of them. It's pretty nice. Now one of my favorite features is nesting. For example, here we have a header element styling, and then we have another header call to get the h1 tag inside of that header. Now in SAS, you're able to nest this directly inside of the original header call. So we can do this. We are specifying h1 directly inside the header. Really nice, so you don't have to specify the prefix every single time. Now just a quick word of warning though, it's easy to go overboard with this feature and do some really deep and long complex nesting. I like to keep my nesting simple so that it's just easy to tell at a quick glance what exactly is nested under what. But do some experimenting on your own and figure out what you're comfortable with. Now another style of nesting is one that's self-referencing. For example, here we have an anchor tag and we have an anchor with a hover applied to it. Now you can nest this as well, but to do that you have to use an ampersand to represent the parent element. Because this isn't a true nested element here, you're just modifying the hover attribute on this element. So we can do it like this, and that will work exactly the same way because the ampersand represents the parent element, which in this case is the anchor tag. So that's it for nesting. Now another feature I really like is variables. Uh, you can see here that we have this background color that we're using, which is a blue, and we're using the same exact color for our anchor tag and the background color in this new project button. So this color is being repeated three times in the CSS file, and it would be nice if we could remove this duplication because if we change it in one place, we'll likely want to change it elsewhere too. And you can accomplish that through variables. So if we go to the top here, we can set a new variable. Now variables are prefixed with a dollar sign. So we can create a new one here called main color. And notice I'm using a dash here. That just seems to be the convention in variable naming in SAS. So that's why I'm doing that. So let's give this a uh, variable name, a value of this color right here. And that means we can use this variable whenever we want inside of our application. So we can specify the main color variable every time we have that blue color, just like that. And now when we reload, our application looks exactly the same. So good, we haven't broken anything. But now this means if we wanna change this color, we just do it in this one location. So I'm hitting Command Shift C to bring up this color panel. Uh, this is available in the CSS bundle in TextMate, but I had to make some modifications in order for it to work with the SCSS bundle in TextMate, which uh, I'll link to in the show notes for this episode. So anyway, here we can change this to some kind of green color. Click OK, and then reload the page here, and notice the background color changed, the link color changes, and the button background changed, all with changing one variable in CSS. But if you notice, this header border here is still a dark blue. It would be nice if this was relative to the main color, and SAS allows us to do that through functions. I encourage you to check out the SAS documentation for the full list of functions. You can see the list here, and you can see that there's one called darken, which will do just what we want. You just pass in a color and a percent value, and it will darken that color by that amount. So going back to our style sheet, if you take a look at our header element here, we have a bottom border color. 
which is that dark blue color that we're using. But now instead of doing that directly, what I want to do is just call darken and then pass in a function, passing in our main color and then a percentage value. So let's say darken by 10%. You can see now when I hit reload, watch this bottom border color and it now changes to a dark green, just like we want it to. All right, now let's move on to mixins. They're another great way to remove some duplicate code. For example, here we have two elements where we're specifying a border radius one time inside the new project button and another time inside each item in the project list. Now border radius is kind of annoying because you have to specify these vendor prefixes in order for it to work in all the various browsers. But we can move this out into a mixin to make this a lot easier to add borders, border radiuses to our app. So to do this, let's take out this border radius code here. And then at the top, let's add a mixin using the at sign and say mixin and give it a name such as um, rounded corners. And then just paste in the code right into here. And then we can use that mixin wherever we want. So back in our new project item here, we can just call include with an at sign and then say rounded corners. And that's it. Now it will automatically inherit the uh, styles inside that mixin. Now we want to use the same mixin down here as well, where we, are, where we also have a border radius. So we can just add it like this, but the problem is that this specifies a 10 pixel border radius where the other one was five pixels. So we need some way of passing arguments into a mixin and actually that is fully supported. You just pass in parentheses and say something like 10 pixels and that'll be passed in as an argument into the mixin up here. So we can say rounded corners and then we can say uh, radius and then just use that just like this. And then it will be passed in for each one of these. So we could either do this or we pass in five pixels here. And you can also specify defaults in your argument list here. So we could say radius defaults to five pixels, then it would just set that for every one. But for something like this, I think setting it every time is a good thing. And you can see by reloading our page here, everything still looks the same and we get our rounded corners uh, just like we had before. Now let's talk about how we can use SAS across multiple files because I hate to have one long style sheet file. It would be nice if we could organize it into separate files. And notice I already have a projects SAS file here which was actually generated through the project scaffolding I created. And notice it just pretty much blank, it just has a comment in here, but we can use SAS in here and it will all be compiled into a single application CSS file uh, in Rails 3.1. So what we really ideally want is to move this project specific SAS code into the project's SAS file. So let's try this out here and see what happens. So now when we go to the browser and hit reload here, you can see this didn't work at all. Looks like our styling isn't being applied at all. And when this happens, you can either check out your log file or try to visit your assets application CSS file here. And likely there's gonna be some kind of syntax error in SAS giving you some kind of warning and telling you what happened. In this case, it says undefined variable, main color. So it looks like our variable isn't being carried across between multiple SAS files. Now this is unfortunately the way sprockets work in 3.1. Variables won't be shared across SAS files because, well, if we check out our application.css file, this is going to tell sprockets to basically require everything inside our style sheets uh, directory here. But the problem is, is that it compiles each file separately into CSS. So that means they're not going to share any variables or information across each other in SAS. So what we have to do is instead of using sprockets, what we have to do is actually use SAS to import each of our files separately. And another reason I like using this approach is because this way it preserves the load order. Because here, using require tree, we aren't really sure what the load order is going to be uh, for the CSS files. It might load projects first, it might load layout first. I think it's alphabetical, but still, using CSS, I like to keep the load order pretty concrete. So let's switch this over to using SAS for importing our files. To do that, the first step is to remove the require tree line in your application.css file. And next, you should rename your application.css and add the .scss extension to it. And so we can load the other files by using the import command 
and specifying our layout CSS.scss file first. And then we want to also, also load our projects file here as well. So using this import command, we'll make the import happen through SAS, which means we'll preserve all of our variables and mixins and anything else we set through there as well. So if we try reloading this application CSS file, you can see it looks like it's compiling correctly. It's now loading the layout file and then it's loading the projects file. So that's working correctly. Going to our homepage, it now displays correctly again as well. Now you may be wondering, why do we use this extension called SCSS when the actual language is called SAS? Well, it's because uh, SAS actually supports two different syntax styles. And SCSS is the one that's provided in uh, SAS 3, but you can go to the old one, which is still fully supported, by renaming this to .sass. And the old extension actually is basically the same thing, except it doesn't have any curly braces or semicolons at the end of the lines. So basically it uses some syntactic white space to define the indent level. So you would apply this to the rest of the code as well, but I sort of like the SCSS syntax just because it's very easy to fall back to normal CSS if you want to. So I'll just change this back to normal SCSS. I want to finish this episode with one more quick tip and that has to do with conditional CSS based on your current controller. Now, given that I have a project CSS file, you might think that this code will only apply to the project's controller actions, but that's not the case because this is all compiled into a single application CSS file, which will be applied to every single page. Normally, this isn't a problem if you scope everything properly, but sometimes this can get uh, kind of messy with a lot of conflicting named uh, scopes and everything. Now one possible solution you might want to consider is to go into your application layout file and in the body tag add an ID attribute and then pass in the name of the controller. So we can say params controller and then I like to call parameterize on this just in case there's dashes in the controller, slashes that is, and we can say call it underscore controller. So that way we have a unique ID for each controller which we can scope to inside our SAS file. So in here we can nest everything under our projects controller. So that way it only gets applied to that specific controller so we know we won't have conflicting styles with similar names and other controllers. Just kind of a neat way to scope things based on their current controller if you want to go that route. Well, that finishes up this episode. Be sure to check out the SAS site for the full documentation and details because I haven't been able to cover everything here in this episode. Uh, there's a lot more to do and experiment with, so I encourage you, check it out, and have fun.